Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to go over troubleshooting access. This is my checklist for troubleshooting your access problems. Today's question doesn't come from one person. It comes from literally thousands of students from everywhere. And the emails always start off like this. I've got a problem with my database. It's not working. It was working before. Can you help me? Well, first, I have to say, if you're looking for help with your Access database and you're emailing or you're chatting with an expert online, give as many details as you can. What isn't working? Are you getting an error message? What have you tried? If you just say it's not working, that's not a lot for me to go on. But before I dig into your database and try to help you solve your problem, I'm going to point you to my Access Troubleshooting Checklist. Now, this is on my website. There's the URL. 599cd.com slash trouble. Go here first and run down this list and check all of these things. Now this list is updated from time to time. So in addition to watching this video where I'll give you some extra tips, check the checklist and make sure that I haven't added anything new to it. Now, like the checklist says, I pulled my hair out with strange access problems all the time too. And sometimes the weirdest things just your code doesn't work, your forms won't open, and you can't figure out why. I went nuts one day trying to fix a bug, and it turned out all I had to do was reboot the PC. It was the last thing that I tried, and I spent hours and hours trying to fix this problem. I rebooted the computer, and everything worked. So sometimes weird problems creep into your databases, and it's not the database's fault. It could be something crazy going on in Windows. So here's my list of stuff, and this is what I recommend you do in order. I try to put these in order of... Try these things first because they're simple and they're easy. And then we'll get into more complex things as we go along. First, of course, is back up your database before you do anything. You should have a nightly backup running. If not, do. All right, get a, get a backup system going on first. Make sure you back up everything. Next thing to try, a compact and repair. So number one thing you should do whenever your database isn't running properly, do a compact and repair. It's inside your database. Go to database tools, compact and repair. Very easy to do. All right, it's right in here. Database tools, compact and repair. Not only is this a good idea to do on a regular basis to get rid of any extra empty space in your database and to keep it nice and small and efficient, but the repair part of it can actually fix any problems that Access sees with the database structure itself. So that's always good to do first. Next up, restart access. Believe it or not, just closing the database down and then restarting it could make your problem go away. And if that doesn't work, restart all of your access databases. I've had situations before where I've had multiple databases running on the same computer. One was like the work database. Another one was a background email server and so on. And a problem with any one of those could cause problems with all of them. They use the same shared DLLs, the same resource files in the background. And if any one of them has memory problems or any kind of issues, it could affect all of the access databases on your machine. Same goes for all of Microsoft Office, Excel, Word. They have a lot of shared files that all of the Office programs use. So if, if you restarted all your access databases and you've got Word and Excel running, restart all of your Office applications. Then, of course, the next logical step, you've restarted all of Office, you've shut down and restarted all of your Access databases, well, reboot the computer. Now, back in the old days, this was really painful, having to reboot your computer. Well, I remember when I started, rebooting your computer could take five minutes. You go get coffee, you come back, and it was still sitting there loading Windows. You may have some other misbehaving programs on your computer, a game that you played last night, for example, or something else that's just causing you memory leaks. You, you have no idea. Reboot the computer, give it a fresh start. Nowadays, my Windows 10 machine boots in like 15 seconds. So it's nice and quick. It's nice and fact, fast. Go get some coffee if you have to. Okay. But reboot the computer. It gives yourself a fresh start. And if you have anything, I should probably add this to the seat. I always come up with ideas. If you have any startup programs that are loading, I'm going to, I'm going to add this to the checklist. There we go. Reboot clean. If you have any startup programs in your Windows startup folder, try disabling those and then boot your computer. That may solve the problem. Next, try a backup. Sometimes the problem could be something that you recently did to your database. Some change you made, some form you edited, some code you added. 
save your current database, set it aside, rename it so you don't lose anything. All right, you don't want to lose your work, but try restoring one of your more recent backups that you know worked. Okay, if that database worked, then the problem was caused by something you recently changed. So now that'll help you go in and troubleshoot where the problem crept in. Okay, if that still doesn't try to fix the problem, try the next oldest backup. All right, if you know something from two weeks ago worked, try restoring that backup. And that should try to help you nail down at least where the bug crept into your database. Try a different computer. All right, if you've got a different PC or a different laptop or something else you can try the database on, do that. Like the story here says, I once had a database that wouldn't work on one specific computer. The client called me several times and couldn't figure out what the problem was. It worked fine on every other machine in the office and no other application like Word had issues, just the database that I built for her, my database. Turns out it was a faulty keyboard, believe it or not. For some reason, there was a short that affected access in some particular way. It, it Somehow it, it manipulated just a certain region of the computer's memory. I have no idea why. Don't know what the problem was exactly. Replaced the keyboard and the database ran fine. It was weird. It's completely weird. I have no reason why a keyboard would affect my access database and only my access database. Everything else ran fine. It, it joined the network. Word and Excel ran okay. Just this database. Next, try an office update. All right, bugs happen. Microsoft is constantly fixing bugs all the time. Sometimes an update creates a bug, especially if you've got auto updates on. Sometimes you can install an update and then a bug creeps in. Just recently, in fact, Microsoft did something in one of the updates that caused the Shift F2 Zoom not to work in Access. Worked for years, and I know I didn't cause any problems, I didn't make any major changes, but all of a sudden I'd hit Shift F2 to zoom into a field in my Access database and the whole application crashed. And I'm like, what? And it only happened on my Windows 8 machine and not my Windows 10 machine, so that was even weirder. But I Google searched it, and of course Microsoft had posted that it was a known bug, they were working on a fix, they promised to fix in a couple of days. They posted an update and everything was fine after that update. So it was a known bug. Someone else discovered it. They knew about it. So do an office update and make sure that, you know, you have the most recent version of Access and the most recent version of Office and everything should hopefully at that point go fine. If not, try updating Windows. Make sure you have the latest version of Office and Windows installed. All right, bugs in Windows. Even if it's something stupid, like a networking bug, it could cause access not to run right, especially if you're using access over a network. Run a scan for viruses. This might be something that you're doing regularly anyways, but if you have a virus or you know an old Trojan file or something on your computer, it could cause any number of problems. I'm very careful. I don't download and run any software that I don't that I, I'm not sure comes from a reputable site, but even then they could sometimes get viruses. You, you never know. So do a virus check. I'm not a big fan of buying third-party virus software. I think Windows Defender that comes with Windows is just fine, but make sure you update your definitions files and you can do that in your control panel and make sure that it's up to date. Do a scan. Make sure that you don't have any viruses on your computer, especially again, if you've tried this on other computers and it works fine. It's an issue on your machine. All right, this one's a little more involved, but set up a new database file. Sometimes a specific database file, ACCDB file, can get corrupted even though the objects inside it are fine. I've seen this happen before. And a compact and repair might not fix it. So here's what you do. Create a new ACCDB file, a blank file. Import your objects into it from the other database, right? Do a file import, pull them in, Start a few objects at a time if you want to. You can try pulling them all in first and see if that fixes the problem. If not, pull them in one at a time. Pull in your customer table, your customer form, your main menu, all that stuff, and see if it works. It could be a corrupted ACCDB file. I've seen it happen before. I, imp I tell the user, import all the objects into a blank new file, and then it just mysteriously works. Why? No idea. But it's one of the, another thing to try. Next, especially if you've got a lot of code and a lot of modules in your database, compile the database. In the Visual Basic Editor window, go to Debug Compile. You'd be surprised what bad code in one module could do to another. This usually highlights any syntax errors you have, but sometimes you'll be surprised at what it'll point out. All right, again, inside your database, if you have a module down here, I don't have any in this database, but you could open those up. If not, just go into any form, right? Go to design, go to the little button here that says View Code. All right, that'll bring up your VBA editor. Just go up to debug and then compile. Now mine's grayed out because I haven't made any changes since the last time I compiled it, but I'll just make one little change. I'll just backspace over something here. All right, debug and then comp D 
debug, and then compile. And then if nothing happens, your code is clean. But if it finds errors anywhere in any module in your database, it will generate an error message for you, and you'll be able to fix it. All right, next up, you've gone through all these things. The next thing to try is reinstall Office. Now, I know this is a pain. This takes a while to do, especially if you got 365 and it all has to download again. But sometimes you could have a corrupt Office file. And that's why it's important to completely uninstall Office first. Don't just install it over the copy that you have right now because Office will not necessarily copy all of the shared files back over again. Remove every trace of Office from your computer, including Word and Excel and PowerPoint and everything else. Do a complete Office uninstall, then reinstall it fresh again. That will make sure that you got all those DLLs, all those shared files are back on your system. This is especially true if you've installed Office over older versions of Office, right? On the same machine, you had Office, you know, uh, a 97, then you upgraded to Office 2000, then you upgraded to, you know, Office 2007, then 2013. Now you got 365. You got one machine that you've had for years with all these different versions of Office on it. it the, the installs might not have cleaned up all the old garbage from the older versions. Okay, and that's why I always say, I mean, <laughs> the next logical thing is here is, is reinstall Windows, right? I, I might add that to the list, but I wouldn't say go that far for an Office problem. But uh, again, that goes into try your database on a fresh machine. If you've got a machine that's relatively new in your office with a brand new copy of, of Windows, brand new copy of Office on it, try your database on that one and see if it works. Reinstalling Windows is the next logical step, though. All right, so there I threw reinstall Windows on there. You might have to. If you've tried everything else and uh, your database works fine on another computer, especially if you've taken it over to Joe's you know, accounting machine and his database works, but yours doesn't, could be a problem with Windows. Could have a corrupted DLL file from, from Windows. Uh, there's a lot of shared uh, files in there that all your applications, including Office, use. Uh, I also added another one on there. Remove third-party components. If you've got plugins that you've purchased or downloaded from some site on the web that you've plugged into your access database to do other things like a tree view control or whatever. Though I've seen those cause problems too. That's why I try to stick with just things that are built into access. If you've taken any of my uh, lessons, you'll know that I do whatever I can without relying on third-party plugins. Okay. There's some cool stuff out there too, but it doesn't always work right. It doesn't always behave it certainly is hard to distribute your database to other people if you've got these third-party plugins. All right, if you've got something cool that works on your machine, it might not work for everybody else, especially if you're on a network and you got a bunch of different people that want to be able to use this database. So I try to stick to things that are just built into Access. But I've seen those third-party components cause problems, especially when it works on your machine and you distribute it and you try to troubleshoot that machine, why, why Joe's accounting machine is not working now. Well, it's because of that third-party plugin. You remove it and everything works fine. Okay, so that's pretty much my entire checklist. If you have any thoughts, anything you want to add to this list, please let me know. If you've run down this entire checklist and you're still stuck, feel free to contact me. There's a couple different ways you can contact me. There's links there on the page. The first line is the access forum. If you're one of my students, you can post in the forum. And I, I do my best to help people. I've got the tech help page, which is how I make videos just like this one. If I like your question, I might answer it personally, or I might even make a video out of it. And of course, I've got paid support available on my consulting page. Before I finish the video, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy, Alex. He's been my right-hand man. He's helped with a lot of these uh, issues coming up and adding stuff on the, the troubleshooting checklist that I completely forgot about. I'm like, oh yeah, why didn't I think of that? So as soon as Alex throws something at me, I put it on the checklist. So again, Alex, thanks a lot for your help. There is no members only extended cut version of this video, but for most of my tech help videos, I do have members only extended cut editions that you can watch to learn more information. Just click on the join button down below the video for more information and a complete list of all the different videos that are available. Thanks for watching as always. And again, if you have anything you'd like to see me add to this checklist, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me. Also be sure to like and share this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channels and get notifications for any new releases that I have. If you have not yet tried my free access level one, it's three hours long and it's absolutely free. You can find it right there on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just a dollar and that is also free for members. As I mentioned earlier, if you've got a problem, and you can't figure it out, feel free to send it to me at my tech help page. This is where you go for free support. If I like it, I'll even make one of these videos out of it.
And if your problem is even more challenging and you need help right away and you don't want to wait for a tech help video, well, I do have consulting services available as well. As always, thank you very much for learning with AccessLearningZone.com and I'll see you next time.